Okay, great. Well, um, I'm excited to be here. Thanks so much for organizing this, Brita. And um, thanks everyone else for, for being here. Um, so again, very quickly, um, I'm, my name is Rachel Vassor. For those of you who I haven't had the chance to meet yet, I'm an assistant professor in Spanish and also um, the director of the first and second year uh, Spanish language program. And my research um, broadly focuses or is broadly defined as um, Spanish as a second language, its acquisition um, and context of learning. And I think about context of learning very broadly um, because, well, you'll see in a minute. Um, so the first topic that I'll talk about is willingness to communicate. And this um, is the topic that I studied and investigated in my dissertation. And it's this triangle here, if you can see it. Um, I have your pictures covering it, so I can't see it very well. Um, but this willingness to communicate uh, framework comes from uh, it's a, a bunch of researchers um, proposed it in 1998 and then, which seems like a long time ago, um, but there's continues to be research done on it in a variety of different um, methods. And I took the framework and um, operationalized it in a short term study abroad uh, context in by Lourdes, Spain. And so I have a case study with one student who was sort of um, a very, um, uh, I would say not, not normal case because he took his own language pledge and he went to Spain and spoke um, as much Spanish as possible. And so his willingness to communicate and his L2 use was sort of off the charts. And so um, that's one of the uh, projects that I have um, that I've been working on. And then I have another case study of a student who was about the same language level as him, but she was um, a student who was adopted from China. And so she, according to Spaniards, didn't look American um, with air quotes, of course. And so that's another um, one of the cases that I am currently working on and um, hoping to send um, probably by the end of the, not this semester, but the end of next semester, um, because there's a bit of race there that hasn't really been explored in the willingness to communicate triangle when she considers herself American, but other people don't necessarily um, where she was. And so that's sort of interesting. So in that short term study abroad context um, for this willingness to communicate uh, for Americans in Spain has been um, very sort of interesting for me and um, something that something that I've been working on, even though um, right now study abroad is not uh, happening, we hope that it will happen again in the future. And also the willingness to communicate triangle can be something very um, important for our students in our classrooms. And it can be a very good strategy that we use to help our own students um, think about their communication in our classes and a method that they can increase their communication and speaking um, as a way to hopefully eventually increase their oral proficiency. And that's something that in the future I'd like to explore. Um, it's not something that I can say necessarily. If we increase willingness to communicate, we can increase, you know, X, Y, or Z in um, acquisition. But um, it is, there is, there has been some positive research done with, uh, fluency and willingness to communicate. So it's something I'd like to explore in the future. Um, I also work on intercultural competence, intercultural communicative competence. And this um, is with the, well, with the garlic project that we affectionately refer to it as um, the Global Readiness Through Language and Culture Project. Uh, uh, about 12 of us became um, IDI qualified administrators. And I think there's a, another group of people who will become qualified administrators this December. Um, and I'm working on a project uh, with one of our graduate students about sustainable education through content based instruction. Um, and this is pretty exciting because it's also it's connected to the garlic project. And it will be um, it will give Texas Tech uh, some really good I don't know, press but um, really good uh, recognition for the work that we're doing here through this project um, and the transformation of the um, of how we're teaching and fusing language and culture together. Um, also, I'm looking at uh, and have been looking at with a colleague um, intercultural competence reflections and video conferencing. And so that's like implementing 
uh, connecting our students in our classes with people, native speakers generally from other countries through um, Zoom or Skype. Usually it's through a third party vendor so that the native speakers have um, some training. Um, and then looking at those reflections because um, we can't just put a native speaker and a learner together and expect intercultural competence to happen. Um, and intercultural competence is something that has been very important recently uh, and is one of the things that Texas Tech really wants our students to become global citizens um, as, as they graduate. And then um, I won one of the actual research awards uh, last year to explore the intercultural communicative competence can do statements and their um, implementation and use in the classroom. And so that project has been a little bit slower uh, in part due to COVID, but I'm still working on it and hope to um, get that out by the end of uh, the academic year also. Um, I also look at program evaluation and outcomes assessment um, through an assessment for a learning project that I've been working on with Paul Perret, who's the, um, I don't know what his official title is actually now, he was the director uh, for the Center for Global Communications. Um, they sort of had a little change in the um, how those uh, centers were organized recently. Um, but we're looking at uh, how students are preparing and prepared for study abroad um, before or after their orientation, but before they actually leave. And then, um, and, and we're looking at that based on their majors, um, their genders, and um, also we and, and those have been significant and so that's been really interesting and so then we can say okay well can we specifically target then orientation um, or information that we give to those students or you know the advisors and then the information that those students are getting before they go abroad um, to better motivate them and better prepare them for their study abroad experiences. Um, and previously I've worked on some Spanish major student learning outcomes. Um, and I hope to continue to do some of that um, program evaluation outcomes assessment in the future. Um, but right now it's not something I've, um, I'm actively working on, but something I, I do hope to do again. Um, and then, of course, we have a collaborative writing, individual writing with Idoya Ilola and um, Camino Bueno, who is the visiting scholar who is here. Um, and we're looking at the impact of peer feedback and collaborative writing on individual writing compositions in um, L2 Spanish. And this was a project that we did in the lab, in the language lab um, last year. Um, so we were very grateful for to be able to work with the language lab um, and the students were, were doing that uh, through Google Docs um, and we were able to record screen recordings and things like that. And then Nidoya and I are also um, co-editing a special issue in the in the journal languages um, on second language and heritage language writing and composing with technology. And um, so that's more of a recent um, research interest, I guess, um, but also it's it's development of, of language and um, in a in a context of learning and relates to the, the program because it, the research was done in the uh, 2607, so the intensive second language, intensive second semester, sorry, um, Spanish is a second language course. So um, it's always really exciting to be able to do research with the students who are in the program um, and really be able to change the curriculum and um, impact those students, whether it be through writing, oral um, proficiency development, willingness to communicate, or um, intercultural competence, intercultural communicative competence, and or preparing them for study abroad. So those are things that I'm um, particularly interested in, in right now. Two minute warning, Rachel. And then, um, thank you. <laughs> this is the last slide, I think. Um, and then um, recently, Idoya and I also were able to um, have the L2 heritage, second language and heritage language classroom based research lab that we haven't been able to use let, yet. Um, but it's now in existence um, in the basement and it'll be basically a space that we can um, bring a couple of learners and do focus groups and interviews and um, small scale uh, sort of ex learning experiences with learners if, um, if that's needed. And so um, happy to talk to people about working in that space too, if, if that's something you know relevant to research that, that you're all also doing. So. Thank you.